Example 56. Find the probability of awaking in the morning when using three alarm clocks if each alarm clock has a 99% chance of waking you. All right, so to do this problem, I have to figure out first what type of problem it is. So I can see that it's a probability problem, but beyond that, I don't have much in the way of keywords here. I'm kind of used to, at this point, seeing problems with great keywords, and I don't see that. So at this point, I have to think a little harder. So let's think about one thing here that's very important. I'm using three alarm clocks, right? Now, the act of each alarm clock attempting to go off or going off, each one of those is a separate event, isn't it? No, alarm clocks don't you know, act simultaneously. They're not one um, organic body, right? They're three separate things. So there's actually three little separate events in this problem. So when I think about it that way, I could say, well, hmm, this is multiplication rule in some way, right? So it should involve three events. That's important. But the next thing is, is to try to write the probability statement out and have it make enough sense that we can come up with an approach to solve it, right? So let's do this. If I write the probability that um, I wake up, right? I wake up when using three alarm clocks. I'm not going to write the when using three alarm clocks, but that, of course, is part of the problem. So the probability I wake up. Now, remember, this problem is about waking up with alarm clocks, so we're only interested in the alarm clock issue. Obviously, you know, if a train you know, derailed next to your house, that might wake you up, right? Or if a meteor came down and smashed through your roof, you'd wake up. And so there might be some small probabilities of those events occurring, but uh, we're interested only in the idea of a simple world where we're just gonna rely on the alarm clocks to wake us up, and otherwise we'll assume that we'll sleep in if the alarm clocks don't operate. All right, good, so in that idealized world, let's think about how to solve this problem. Well, the problem that I wake up is actually not simple, right? Because what does it take to wake up? That's what you have to think about. Because you know the probability I wake up, I know there's three alarm clocks, and so if I, if I started drawing three spaces, I think I would be in trouble. Let's do that actually, and we'll show that it won't work. Let's try to draw three spaces, right? There are three events, so I should have three spaces, and there's gonna be multiplication anytime there's more than one event. So I mean, this is not a horrible way to start the problem, but when I look at this first space, I'm not really sure what it should represent. There has to be a very clear idea of what each space represents. If there isn't a clear idea, if there's any ambiguity, if it can go more than one way and still make this true, then I'm not doing the problem correctly. So when I look at this first space, I would ask, you know, what does it represent? And of course, if you're good at probability, you should be able to say, well, that's clearly the first alarm clock, right? And if that's the first alarm clock, the next thing I have to do is think about, well, how do I want that to turn out for this to be true? Well, you might say, well, that alarm clock has to go off. If you said that, I would say, well, are you sure that that's what has to happen? Because what does it take to wake up, really, right? Does the first alarm clock have to go off? I don't think so. I mean, if it does go off, it certainly would wake me up and it would meet the requirement. But it doesn't have to go off to wake me up. So now I have this question, well, it doesn't seem to really matter what happens here. It could or it couldn't, right? If it goes off, I wake up. If it doesn't go off, I don't wake up, right? Not this time, but maybe the second one would go off and wake me up, right? Or maybe the third would go off and wake me up. Or maybe all three would go off, or maybe just two of them. Maybe this one and this one, maybe this one and this one, right? So my question is then, if I can't say for certain how this actually has to turn out, then I must not be doing the probability right. Because when we work out a probability problem, I have to have a precise probability for every space. And I can't have a situation where it doesn't matter what happens. So if that occurs, then at that point, I must be doing it wrong. So that means this statement isn't good enough. I need to go further than that. So let's kind of cross that out and start over. Let's take this and make it more explicit. It says probability I wake up, and that's what we're asked to do. But I want to think about that more carefully, because whenever you run into this problem where things are ambiguous, it means you haven't thought it through carefully enough. You need to be more precise about what it means to wake up here. What has to actually happen? Well, the answer to that is very simple. The probability that you wake up is the probability that what? At least one clock works. Isn't that correct? Because it's not the probability that one clock works, because in probability, that's a very specific meaning. That would mean exactly one works and two do not, right? So you have to say it that at least one clock works, because what that means is that what? One or more of the clocks work. And in any of those scenarios, we could wake up, right? Either one clock will work, and it'll be the first one, let's say, and we wake up, or maybe the second one works and we wake up, or maybe the third one works and we wake up, or maybe two of them work, right? Or maybe all three. 
there are actually seven separate scenarios that would wake us up, right? If you want to go through those very quickly, let's do it. It would be the first clock working and the two other two not, the second clock working and the other two not, the third clock working and the other two not, or the first and the second work, or the first and the third, or the second and the third, or finally all three work. Those are the seven different ways that we could wake up using three alarm clocks. So this statement actually captures all of those because at least one clock works implies, yeah, one or more, right? And that's what it takes to wake up. And now the reason why this is very helpful is because we have a rule, the probability of at least one that will help us solve this. And it's going to say, hey, look, we could add up all those separate probability scenarios I just listed, those seven scenarios where we wake up, but that takes a lot of work. That would be seven separate little sets of three fractions all multiplied and then added together. And then that would allow us to solve the problem the constructive way, adding everything up. But there must be an easier backdoor way. And this formula brings us to that. So it probably at least one clock working. If you use this little poem in your head, it's the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. At least one is one minus the probability of none. So this should be one minus the probability that none, right? So there's the at least one partner, none. And then you just fill in what you put here. You said at least one clock works. Now you're going to say one minus the probability none of the clocks work. And this is the one probability we have to figure out. If we can figure out this one probability, after subtracting from one, we will have our answer. So let's do that then, right? One minus, how do we answer this? Well, there are three clocks, so we will need three spaces. And now, if you notice, there's a very clear way to say what this space represents. It represents something to do with this statement, right? These are the three clocks. And how do we want the first clock, right? That's what that first space is, the first clock. In this statement here, how do we want that first clock to function? Well, we would say we want the first clock, right, to not work, right? We want the first clock to not go off or not wake us up. Well, that's pretty easy to figure out. If there's a 99% chance that the clock wakes you up, what's the chance it doesn't wake you up? Well, that would be 1%, right? As a decimal, that's 0 0.01. All right, and now let's think about this. We'll imagine that the scenario is independent because you know any person you know would obviously, if they're really going to use three alarm clocks, they would probably have the sense to plug in three batteries into those clocks so they're not all dependent upon the same power source, right? That way, they're all independent events, right? So the first clock fails, it won't affect the second clock failing, right? All right, so what's the probability the second clock does not work, right? Because that's what we want here, right? We want a second clock. And we want it to not work because we were trying to find the probability that none of the clocks work. So second clock does not work. But of course, that probability must be the same as this one because each clock has a 99% chance separately of waking us. So the chance that it doesn't work is again 0.01. And you know, of course, the same logic applies for the last clock. And so that's our answer. It's 1 minus 0 0.01 to the third power. So that's going to be our solution. It's going to be 1 minus 0 0.01 to the third power, right? All right. And then from there, that's going to be like 1 in a million, actually. See why? It's going to be 1 minus, remember, this is 1 over 100 raised to the third, third power. So that's going to be 1, 1 millionth. But either way, it's uh, 0 0.01 to the third. I plug that in and I get this answer. I get. Uh, 0 0.999999. So there's our answer. It's basically a 99.9999% chance of waking us up, right? There's a very good odds we wake up. And, um, you know, again, because there's only a one in a million chance we don't wake up. So from there, we'll end up with the chance that we do wake up, which is 0 0.999999. 99.9999%. Now you may say, well, gee, that's not a huge improvement. I mean, we had a 99% chance of an individual clock waking us up. But if you say that, you're actually not thinking carefully enough because in reality, what this says is that only one out of every a million times we try to use three alarm clocks, will we not wake up? Where in the other scenario, if we only use one clock, it's a one out of a hundred chance that we don't wake up. So that means on average, if we use the clock, hundred times, roughly one time out of a hundred, we wouldn't wake up, you know. So if we used it, you know, I don't know, 300 times a year, we might be late to work or something three times, you know, which is kind of a lot. Whereas here, you know, 
if you work, you know, one in a mil only not work one in a million times. So it's quite an improvement, right? You'd have to use the alarm clock, three alarm clocks, like a million times before on average, you'd have just one time not waking up. So that might be a whole lifetime, right, of using those three alarm clocks and never once uh, failing to get up. So it's a huge improvement, actually. So don't let the, you know, 99 versus 99.9999 fool you. This is a massive improvement in the probability. Okay, so there's a proper way to do the problem. And we can see the value of at least one probability, right? It saved us having to work out seven, seven separate scenarios and adding them all up to get the answer, right? So it's really a huge time saver.